All right, guys, I'm ready to talk about my guns. What do you mean? You said we were doing guns today. It's the gun show. Pistols? The camera's not even set up to hit my legs. Anyways, guys, if you're tuning in to watch me flex for nine minutes, you are going to be disappointed. This week's movement breakdown is going to be the single-legged squat or the pistol. So follow along, we'll cover some tips and tricks to improve your pistol, help you identify some faults and some fixes, and hopefully make it better for the long term. Typically in CrossFit, we do a lot of air squats or two-legged squats. Some of the movement patterns and ranges of motion for the one-legged squat and the two-legged squat are going to be very similar. The difference is, you guessed it, one leg. To start the pistol, we're going to typically extend one leg out front. Our down leg will stay flat on the ground with the foot, we will start by sending the hips back and down. It's going to be important that we keep the whole foot on the ground throughout the entirety of the movement. As we descend, we want to try and keep our chest high. We want to help our knee track out over the foot. This is going to be just like our two-legged squat where we tell the knees to track out over the feet. Nothing changes in that regard. It's really easy to let the knee cave in in the pistol, so you have to do focus a little bit to make sure it stays out over the foot. As we get down to a below parallel position where our hip crease is going to be below the knee, we can come out of the, out of the pistol. We're going to drive through our heel, we will extend our leg, and come back to full extension to complete the movement. Once your leg is extended, you can put your other foot down, the movement is complete, and we would start another rep either on that foot or alternating legs, which is pretty common for our CrossFit workouts. There's a couple common faults you'll see with the pistol. The two categories we'll come from here are going to be not enough flexibility or not enough strength. We'll talk about each of these separately and we'll talk about some quick fixes or workarounds and we'll talk about some long-term fixes for each, each part. So if you uh, don't have enough flexibility, the pistol is going to typically look like this. You'll have trouble getting to that full depth or if you get to full depth, you will fall over at the bottom because you cannot keep your center over your support. If you don't have enough strength, you will typically get stuck at the bottom. You might descend to the bottom of the pistol and collapse completely if you lose tension down there, or you might not be able to get out of the hole. So trying to drive out with one leg does not give you enough pop. So if our issue is we don't have enough flexibility to do the pistol, we got a couple quick fixes that might help you in the, the really short term. Number one is pre-workout mobility. We wanna be really aggressive targeting the ankles, hamstrings, and hips, getting ready to do the pistol. We're not gonna spend a ton of time here. I would suggest 30 seconds per movement per side because we're not gonna create any significant change during our pre-workout mobility pieces. After you hit a good pre-workout mobility, we wanna start with a, a couple little fixes, a couple little implements. First option is to raise the heel. So we can use a plate or an Olympic weightlifting shoe maybe a crushed beer can, but we want to raise the heel off the ground. That's going to simulate a little bit of ankle flexibility. So if your ankles are tight, we can make the, the change by propping that heel up a little bit. We could also go for a counterweight, something to hold out in front, a kettlebell, a dumbbell, maybe even a small child or animal, something that's going to help you not fall over at the bottom. We could also elevate our surface. We can go for a single leg squat on a box. A lot of times the flexibility is really pushed by extending that leg at the bottom. And if we can keep the leg closer or the leg underneath, we might not be taxed quite as vigorously as we would if we were not elevated. We want to try and create some long-term change by working on these mobility pieces following the workout. So hit your lizard stretch, hit your ankle stretches, hit your hip stretches. We need to spend time in here consistently week after week to try and make that change. If you can help your hips and ankles open up over the long term, the pistols will get easier. But it's not going to happen overnight, so you need to take the patience and the time to do this with consistency. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but Jeff, I'm flexible enough to do the pistol, but I can't get out of the bottom. Well, if that's the issue, we want to work on the strength component. First thing we're going to do is raise your lower, your bottom position. So we can do a pistol to a high box. Start with a really high box and try and maintain tension. Try and tap and come back up. We would slowly lower the box to develop strength 
through the uh, a greater range of motion. Another thing we can do, give ourselves some assistance. We can use a band or a door frame or some sort of a post. But we want to hold on to something and give ourselves a little bit of upper body assistance coming out of the bottom position. This is good because it can allow us to hit the full range of motion, but we can still get that little bit of assistance wherever we need it. More difficult in terms of scaling the pistol with assistance would be a band or a rope, something that is not going to give you a lot of support. So work for something really solid down to something that is less solid or more flimsy to really emphasize getting out of the bottom. A long-term fix for the strength portion of the pistol is going to be improving your overall strength. So we can do this by working the full range motion. In this case, we want to get a lower box and we can go for a negative. We want to do a negative pistol by putting our foot next to the edge of the box, sending those hips back and down and going down under control. Once we hit the box, we are going to not keep tension. We're going to relax completely. We're going to stand up with two legs and we're going to repeat the movement. We could also go for a positive. You could start at the bottom of the box. You could lean back, get a little bit of momentum into it and drive with that leg out of the pistol. It's going to get you the benefit of a little bit of a rolling start at the bottom, but also allow you to drive through that full range of motion. In addition to doing our positive off a of box, we can go to a rolling or a candlestick roll pistol. This is going to be the same idea of generating a little bit of momentum off the box, but in this case, we're going to use our body weight to roll back and roll up, and we're going to drive off one leg. It's a little bit more difficult than going from the box, but it is a new set of skill, allows you to practice that hollow position at the bottom as well. All right, I know what to do to fix my pistol. How do I go about doing this? We want to go through some sort of, of increasing progression. We want to start with a really basic exercise and we want to increase the difficulty or the load until we get better. I started with a really basic rep scheme. I'm going to say five by fives and uh, we would start with a negative. Um, work up for one to two weeks of five sets of five of each leg of a of a pistol negative. We then go to the positive with the lower box. We can go to the candlestick roll. By the time you're getting candlestick roll pistols consistently, I would want you to start adding in regular pistols. I would alternate at first so we don't get really good on the right leg and then can't do the left leg. And it's gonna give you a little bit of time to rest between the movement. It'll also help you identify if one leg is working better than the other. Once we are knocking out unweighted pistols, we can make this more difficult by adding weight. As I mentioned, adding weight was sometimes a scaling option or making it easier if you have the strength to do it. Now we're going to try and test our single leg strength so we can get a little bit more aggressive adding the weight. We're not using a small weight to counterweight, counterbalance this. We're going to use a larger weight to make it more difficult. You guys, thanks for watching. This has been the movement breakdown on the pistol. I hope you guys learned something. We definitely want to see what your pistol looks like. So take a video of yourself with your best attempt at a pistol, whether it is scaled or unscaled, or you collapse at the bottom, it doesn't matter. If we can't see what you look like, we can't give you any suggestions to help you get better at it. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly movement breakdowns, our daily workouts and briefings, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.